Guys, welcome to the Qualitex uh, podcast. Uh, it's uh, amazing to have you here, and this is the first time uh, that I have uh, four guests. So I had uh, two at Max. They were sitting together in one room, but uh, this is uh, really cool. We'll see how it goes. So uh, we have here uh, Ken, David, and Red. They are uh, uh, part of uh, Calidad AI. This is a really uh, cool uh, new platform for auditors that it's uh, going to do some... Uh, Uh, some revolution in the field and uh, I would like to know uh, how and uh, it has to do of course with AI from uh, the name uh, so we have uh, Ken he's the uh, co-founder and the CEO we have Red he's the co-founder and the CEO and uh, David uh, he is uh, 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 an expert uh, on AI and uh, he's also an assistant professor and he knows his stuff in, in this uh, area. Uh, so uh, guys, uh, amazing to have you here and um, I would uh, really want to know about uh, the system, what you work and how you're going to re re revolutionize uh, the auditing process. Yeah, uh, thank you so much for having us, Jan. Uh, you know, um, a little bit of introduction. Uh, I'm Red Pasqual. Uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Calidad AI. Uh, I finished my uh, doctoral degree at the University of California in Berkeley in cancer research. And after cancer research, I said, hey, you know, I think... I want to switch from research and development to, to making some money. And so I went into pharmaceuticals. And I have 18 plus years of experience in pharma. Uh, Ken, do you uh, sure, I'm Ken Tolley. Um, my background has been in software 15 years, predominantly, um, um, somewhat ironically, in uh, quality management. Uh, I've worked in a number of companies, small startups, game companies, um, large companies like Adobe. Uh, basically, I, I kind of uh, jumped into this to, to get these guys to build something um, because I've been working in software for, for quite a while. I know a lot of the ins and outs of a development process and such. And uh, Rhett sort of approached me with a problem that I thought was very um, useful to solve, which is always pretty exciting um, and also seemed pretty solvable, <laughs> which is also nice. Um, But yeah, that's that's a, that's a bit about me. I'm Dr. David Guy Brazan. Uh, as you said, I'm an assistant professor at the University of San Francisco. Um, and I was a software engineer for years and years before I started in research. And my research is primarily in, um, it started in speech processing um, and then it evolved into machine learning. Um, and so that's how, you know, I've got a little bit of, Um, something to bring to the table for this company. So the, the company started because I was talking to Ken about an audit that I had done in, in Europe, actually. And I was kind of complaining to him. I was like, yeah, you know, it was great seeing Europe. Italy was like fantastico, right? But the audit itself was two days And it was brutal, man. And it was limited time. Uh, there's so many things to do, so many things to catch. There's so many things to document, right? And I was telling him that I was writing left and right. You know, documents were coming in. And it, it, it really, for me, it felt like I was in, in the dark ages, right? Because for me, it's the 21st century. Why can't I have some type of software that helps doing an audit, right? Here I am, I'm, I'm taking a tour and I'm taking notes by hand, right? And then weeks later, you know, you're, you're trying to connect a note that you took in one notebook with your computer notes, with your other notes. And it, 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 it kind of drove me insane, right? Uh, And, and I think that's one of the issues that a lot of auditors uh, deal with is how do you reconcile all this different data input coming into one place? Time yeah, you wanna... yeah, he said, you know, can we build like an app or something and help me record it? I'm like, yeah, sure. That, that's easy enough. And then as he started talking to me more about it, I realized that the problem was a little bit 
broader than just, you know, can I capture something on a mobile phone? Um, you know, can I keep track of what I'm doing? And as we got to talking about it, he started explaining to me, you know, this world of auditing and quality, which I found pretty intriguing. Um, there were aspects of that that actually resembled what we do in software as far as quality. And in uh, software, we have a lot of processes, procedures, tools, and systems that actually do help. Not everybody uses them, but, but we have a lot of stuff. So I said, okay, well, let's, let's, uh, let's take a closer look at this. Let's figure out what a feature set would look like. And sort of we started with that interview process with Rhett. And I said, you know, I think we can not just build an application. I think if we talk to more auditors, we might be able to build um, sort of a company around quality software that fits, you know, this demographic, um, particularly with small pharma companies that that apparently don't don't have a lot of software. Like I was very surprised to discover that uh, most of the auditors do something akin to pen and paper, sometimes literally pen and paper to do these. Um, takes a long time for their work. And uh, you said the uh, small companies, I think uh, it's the same problem also with uh, big companies. I, I don't know a, a company or a service that uh, gives you a one place solution to uh, document an audit on a tablet and, or something else. So uh, I think it's something that uh, it has a market uh, overall, small and big companies. Uh, yeah, please uh, continue. <laughs> well, you know, like, like, so Ken was talking to me about it and then I said, but wait, Ken, you know, let's slow down because this is pharma, man. <laughs> Pharmaceuticals is GMP and, 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 and there's so many problems, right? And I've had problems creating software for pharma, right? And I began naming to, for, for Ken all of the problems I see. And I go, the biggest one is software validation, Ken. I mean, in, in, a, in a nutshell, how are you going to track whatever someone inputs all the time, right? That's the biggest problem about pharma using software, right? And I was really surprised because Ken started laughing. Right? And, and, and Ken, you want to? Yeah, so, so oh. you know, like, I mean, it's not Rhett's fault. He's, he's not used a huge range of software. Um, you know, I've run this before. People have a focus on their field, and so they don't actually know what's possible, right? So for a lot of other fields like law and, and um, even some, you know, medical record keeping and such. Um, modern cloud software lets you keep track of everything. It doesn't matter what the user is. It doesn't matter what device they're using. It doesn't matter where they put something. You can capture pretty much anything you want. Um, I sort of, I sort of surprised Rhett and one of the other auditors we were spoken to when I opened up just a Google Doc and I said, "Look, see, as I'm taking notes, look at the history of every change that I made. It's like right here." And they're like, Wait, "How did you do that?" It's like I, did, I didn't have to. It just that's just how the software works. <laughs> it's it's trivial for us to build this for anything, right? And so he got really really excited. Um, and I said, "Look, let's let's go and talk to more auditors. Let's uh, let's put out a survey. Let's find out what their pain points are." Um, and they started getting back to us relatively quickly and. And there were aspects of what, what Reddit mentioned, and then there was the, the one, I think probably the biggest one was, we really, really, really hate writing the reports, uh, really hate contentious audits, I really hate when I lose track of information, I really hate when I'm in a space and there's a, it's a system that, it's not my expertise, but I've got I've to inspect this and I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Um, and it, it ranged. Some of the expert auditors had a range of problems. And then there were junior auditors that were just like, you know what? I hate this whole process. They give me this like checklist page. I don't know how to assemble my checklist. I've got to like pay attention to things when I'm going along. You know, I want something simple like an Evernote for my audits. I, you know, I, I mean, it's all these things that I use for my everyday life because, you know, I'm like under 30. Um, and they all seem to work fine, but I have nothing to help me do this job. Yeah, why in pharma um, so we are we with really... pen and paper and uh, we have such an amazing <laughs> devices that uh, are so sophisticated on our phone. They don't uh, need yeah. so much computing power and they're uh, such uh, so <laughs> powerful. And in every industry, you have amazing uh, amazing tools. Uh, you have amazing tools also uh, in finance uh, with audit trails and etc. And uh, and yeah. you have uh, uh, personal accounting systems that are uh, super easy to use. And you don't have to be an accountant because it tells you each step uh, and teach and uh, explains to you why you should uh, do this and gives it your advice. Why not uh, with auditing? Yeah. yeah. That's actually that's actually a really good point. Like there's you see automation creeping into just about everything. And even as I looked into it with pharma, 
automation is moving into the research side, automation is moving into the manufacturing and production side. But yeah, there's there's nobody trying to automate any aspect of the of the auditing or the quality process. And so yeah, I, I said to Red, I think there's a real opportunity here. Um, and what's more, I think we should bring in my buddy David with the AI background, because some of these things that that uh, we could probably automate from a process perspective, um, some of the enhancements we could make, we, you know, wouldn't have been possible before. So people didn't approach that problem, right? But a lot of them are possible now with um, AI. So, uh, so well, uh, what does uh, the AI do? So maybe you can explain a bit about the general uh, vision of uh, the software. So we talked about many sure. stuff that uh, you can solve really easily. And uh, so uh, what um, is really uh, the vision here to combine everything uh, with uh, one app? How would it look basically? Uh, what is the uh, user experience? And uh, then it would be cool to know how AI plays a role there. Um, sure. Yeah, that's a. Uh, you want to take it, Ken, or should I? Um, Go ahead. Why don't you, you start? Do it. <laughs> okay. um, so a lot of a lot of uh, I don't know about outside the U.S., but a lot of folks inside the U.S. use um, some financial software every year called TurboTax or something like that, right? Or Tax Act or any of these. These are all expert systems. They basically know a whole lot about you know, what's possible and how specifically to minimize, um, minimize the amount of taxes that a person pays. Um, essentially, we're doing something like that. So we're looking at, um, you know, what the auditor cares about and we're guiding them through the audit process so that they, um, they arrive at, you know, an audit that's, that's satisfactory, that has good coverage, um, that they can do in the amount of time that they've got, et cetera. Um, so it's a it's an expert system, but it's also informed by some um, uh, by some some more of the advanced parts of AI, the the more modern parts of AI. Um, so a lot of machine learning, um, a lot of uh, you know like big data type of you know like um, uh, big data type of systems, and specifically for the reports, we have natural language generation. So we're producing a report that reads like you know a human has written it. So basically, um, does so it react we, differently for each person that uses the software? Um, go ahead, Ken. I was going to say, uh, in, in the initial vision, it probably um, won't uh, be absolutely different for each person. Um, when it gets more sophisticated and we, we're happy with the quality it's able to produce, then we can look into ways of not just customization, but automatically adapting, right? Um, if you look at a, at a system like, um, uh, what is it, um, Google Now, um, it, it has a way of, of looking at the data available to give you just-in-time information that you need. Uh, there's probably lots of opportunity for things like that for an auditor that might be related to the things that happened before, during, and after the audit. Um, right now, we're focusing on improving that inspection experience and improving that um, audit development experience. And then we can kind of branch out from there um, really based on what, what the users think they most need. Uh, as, we, as we talk to, to users initially with the product, they outline their, their big concerns. Um, the, the issue of, of uh, basically having enough information at the time, um, we sort of think of, well, you know, it'd be nice to have something like a librarian with you. I want to learn about this particular water system. I want to learn about, you know, the seasonal whatever in uh, this place where I'm expecting the facility. Um, having something that can go and collect that information and make it available for you uh, while you're on site, perhaps after you've lost your internet connection, it's just available to you. Um, that's very appealing. Having a copy of the CFR is very appealing. Um, being able to bring up an example 483 uh, right away when there's some contention about something being assessed or some difference of interpretation of a regulation was something that um, many people said they really wish they had on many occasions um, because, you know, huh. when you're in the field, there's pressure, right? Exactly. But we also, want, we also want something that sort of reminds you like, hey, you've got two hours to complete this audit and you've got three hours worth of work in front of you. So, yeah. you know, so, uh, get going. Uh, you know, like accelerate the pace, maybe drop these things off. Ah, okay. Right. Then does it say, okay, um, um, I so skip this because this is less uh, important, less crucial. Go, go to this uh, part. 
so exactly so we want some some sort of like combination of you know like that librarian that ken was talking about and also like you know like a, an administrative mm -hmm. assistant almost who's saying like you know remember this you know they haven't gotten back to you on oh, this etc okay. etc et let me let me help you take your notes and by the way you're on you're not on schedule <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Hey, you're not on schedule. What do you want to cut from the bottom of this list? And let me make a note of that so you can put it in your report. <laughs> you know, one of the things that I, I, I explained to Ken and David that's different about a pharma audit, right? It's really, it's that an audit is a negotiation, right? If you're the auditee, you're trying to delay the auditor, right? And you're trying to overwhelm the auditor and there's many tactics that one can do right so if it's just a delay i might say to the auditor oh it'll be here in a second when in the back room i'm actually telling them yeah wait a bit at wait five a bit in the or uh, yeah you'll get uh, you'll get the document <laughs> we just need to do the run for it <laughs> exactly mm -hmm. You know, we, we have to get it from the warehouse, right? Because we, we warehouse half of our stuff, right? And so, you know, an, an auditor is basically responsible for checking nearly 20 quality systems, right? And, you know, at most you get two days, that's 16 hours. And if you really break it down, maybe for 25% of the time, you're taking a tour. You have to look at QC, you have to, the labs, you have to look at the manufacturing area, and you have to look at the warehouse. Another 25% of that really is going to be the question and answer, right? You have the reading of your SOPs, reading of documents, and then the question and, and, and answer. Maybe another 25% is really the waiting time. What do you do while you're waiting for all of these documents, right? Now, an auditor always has, you know, a primary objective, right? It's, it, you know, I'm here for manufacturing or QC testing. And so they, they like to focus in. But you're also responsible for anything else in the background, like utilities, for example, right? I, I remember, you know, in, in one of my work experiences, uh, you know, we had done an audit. You know, I, I contracted it out. And unfortunately, it didn't work out. So three months later, during a company dinner, I'm sitting with the president of the company with 20 other people. In the middle of the dinner, she goes, Rhett, how come that audit with X company didn't pick up the issue with the utilities? And, you know, and I'm, I'm in the middle of eating, and I'm like, uh, <laughs> OK, let me try to remember which company out of the 100 I'm responsible for, right? And which 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 year are we talking about? Is it like this past year, two years ago, or three years ago, right? And so, you know, for, for a lot of auditors, this idea of covering everything, the thoroughness with extreme efficiency is a very challenging uh, task, right? And so we think that the software can help out. Because again, our idea is the software is going to be a mentor to you. If you don't know what something is all about, you, you know, the idea is, you know, let's say you're a QC person inspecting a manufacturing area. It's the first time you've seen a 10 cubic meter tank. Well, you just ask the, the software, right? Manufacturing tanks. Is there something that it can tell me about tanks? Oh, look for look for this characteristic or look for this characteristic in the validation, right? Really, it's that idea of having um, embedded guidance or, or notes or tips and tricks that, you know, if, if you run into trouble, you can just say, search, search give me something about this, right? Um, yeah, it's uh, the, we had some auditors sort of describe situations where they want to take a picture of what they're looking at um, so that it's easy for them to characterize later and in some facilities you're not allowed to take pictures and so they said well I always draw it in my notebook can I have something that I can draw what I'm seeing so that I can include that it's like yeah no problem <laughs> <laughs> right like whatever whatever it is you need um, you know I need to run this on my laptop they don't allow cell phones in no problem everything can mm -hmm. sync up in the cloud you can work across your devices uh, as much as you want 
um, it really just boiled down to to in the moment how easily and smooth can the interface be to let you uh, capture the information that you want regarding the particular uh, item or CFR that you're that you're doing the inspection on, um, and then make it easy enough that if you're you know in one part of the facility and you happen to see something that's completely related to a different category, make it you know one two taps on your phone and you're right there to put that information in and then jump right back to the context you were in without any problems. Uh, better still, you know, send one experienced auditor with a team of two or three junior auditors. Um, they don't have to come up with the inspection checklist. Uh, they can do the inspection at the same time. And if it's a good connection, we expect you'll be able to see everyone's progress at the same time, right? Uh, send notes to one another at the same time. So, so you can really be hyper efficient with two or three people, even if some of your party is a little bit less experienced. And oh, by the way, you don't have to collect everybody's notes and then assemble them all together yeah, into that one that's report. A big we'll take care of it for you. Um, you know, because there's a there's an economy of scale when you have several people and you have to combine information. There's an efficiency when you're an individual and you have to figure out what's the most important things to to take a look at. Um, and then again, you get a standard of quality for the audit report on the way out, right? Um, does it really effectively talk about what was um, uh, inspected versus what wasn't? Not every auditor makes a report that looks like that, right? You know, there's a little guessing sometimes. And sometimes that can really burn you. If you're a pharma company in a late stage, something that they missed that you didn't notice, eh, you know, it could, it could cost you, right? Exactly. Yeah, in terms of collaboration, right, I, I had this one story from a colleague of mine. Uh, she, she went on an audit, uh, and I think her senior director decided the, the particular city, right, to audit. And, you know, so she was thinking, oh, great, this will be less work for me, 50-50 cut of the facility, right? And so she, she basically gave him, okay, please inspect these two areas, right? She gets back to the office, and guess what? It's been two weeks, no report from her senior director. Emails him, one month, two months, three months. And what can you say? You report directly to the senior director, uh, boss, you need to write up something, <laughs> right? So, and so she's... You know, and I said, well, what do you do at, at three months? At three months, you're pretty behind. I mean, you need to, like, chop, 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 write that thing out, right? And she admitted to me, Rhett, I, I, I basically gave half of a report because he inspected half of it. It was missing. I never wrote it, right? And so this, you know, it, it's a great example of a challenge, right, for an auditor. You report to so many different people. Through, you're responsible to so many different departments, Right. Now, imagine if that senior director was visiting and he would just have a, you know, a, a iPhone or a pad and he's just clicking yes or no questions, right? David, would you like to tell us what we can do just by doing yes or no questions <laughs> through an, a simplified AI? Well, you, what we've what we've done, um, you know, we have a we have a draft of um, of a report generator right now, and um, I think the report. Uh, from our experiments, the report is generated in about uh, in less than one second. So when it goes to production, I think it is going to take about maybe you know five to ten seconds. Um, yeah. So I don't think it's going to take like three months to like knock on your uh, boss's door anymore. Well, you know, you you there's a lot of the questions. Uh, so so basically, you start with the um, the uh, the CFRs. Right, and then a lot of things can be broken down into a set of questions for every category, for every department that you have to answer. Um, at least at the high level, effectively some yes, no questions, uh, and we can come up with a reasonable observation for what it is you've seen. But at any point in time, you can take your own notes, add your own specifics, um, and then we'll just capture all that when you're done. Actually, we can capture all that at any time, whether you're done or not. Um, and just assemble a report out of what information is there. Yeah. Right. So uh, it's it's interesting, um, really, to understand how it all works uh, from the beginning uh, to the end. What's your, your uh, vision there and uh, where you're at? So uh, one of the challenges, of course, and the most important parts is the preparation for the audit because you need to understand the scope. You need to understand what your 
auditing, uh, what checklist you need to prepare, what standards you need to use, are you going to audit in ISO, GDP, GMP? So, so you need to really to be experienced. So it's really difficult for a uh, new uh, personnel t- to do it because if you don't really know the standards, you um, usually do the mistake of bringing a lot of checklists, uh, paper, like 20 pages of checklists and uh, going through them and then you're confused. Uh, so it's all about the preparation uh, to learn about the scope and really in advance know um, what uh, uh, what checklists you need to know, what questions you need to ask. So it's uh, the basics, what you need to ask. So also you need to look at the history. So you b- uh, you had uh, you have two sites. Uh, one site of your company been there two years ago. Uh, Maybe let's compare notes, you know, and uh, maybe let's look at the older deviations. So how um, is your software dealing with the preparation phase? Um, I, I think, you know, for now we're focused on the, the auditing, so the auditing itself, itself. But we have mm-hmm. our, our customers also, you know. What else do you want? And, and you're correct. One of their issues is the preparation, right? And... The way I would answer that question is audit assist w- is also like a mentor, right? In that underneath the app is a, is a basically a machine learning. And so what, what, what is possible in the future is to take the experience of many, many different professionals from GLP, R&D audits, GCP, and GMP audits, right? And to distill all of their experience process it through the AI, and essentially give the experience of someone with 30 plus, 25 plus years of experience through the app, right? That's my high level explanation. And would you like to do the technical explanation? Well, so yeah, so so that's the goal. Like, um, I'm imagining you, you have a set of questions before you start an audit. Sponsor says, hey, I need you to go and inspect the facility, you know, what's the material, what stage of development you're in, and there's probably like, you know, a range of, of questions you're going to ask them. And what we'd like to do is be able to, to get those questions, see the responses to those, and then make a recommended checklist that's optimized for the amount of time that you have on that site um, for a particular objective you want to do or the departments you want to focus on. And, you know, since everything is being stored in the cloud, we'd keep a history of what it is you've done, what it is you've found. So, you know, two years later, you're going back, that checklist might be slightly different because we know what you covered before. Um, That checklist might be slightly different because we've learned that there's been some focus from the FDA on those types of facilities or that region of facilities um, or those age of companies, right? These are things that might be really difficult for you to pick up, but we want to combine all the information we have to give you the best recommendations not limit you from doing anything you want to do off of that or or reducing that, but just massively simplify. If you do this, you're going to catch all the major and critical issues, right? You're going to catch all the major and critical issues across departments if you go with a team. Uh, You're going to catch all the major and critical issues that are going to be expensive that uh, have been catching people off guard that people haven't noticed for, for reasons that, you know, you haven't experienced before. That's what we really want the software to be able to do for you. Uh, right. And it's in gonna addition, take time like, to get it there, but you know. That's and in what addition, it. sort of like, you know, if this is your coverage area, if this is the stuff you want to cover, um, this is the amount of time that you need to do it, you know. Um, you know, we're looking at a bunch of things like that. So basically right now you're focused on the audit itself and how you help the auditor on the field and uh, with the right references and the, the way to justify yourself uh, to the company because we all know the problem that uh, the company is the expert in the field and they think uh, that they're doing everything correct and they you know uh, there is always uh, this uh, um, this say uh, oh we've been doing this 20 years nobody said it, anything about it it must be right you're wrong right so you need to show okay this is this has changed and you must comply with this now and now and you, and if you don't have the way to really show them this live, uh, you, you get in stress, you do mistakes, you maybe overlook it and trust them. But uh, uh, so basically what you're saying that uh, with your app, uh, you can uh, basically cover, the, the cover all those problems. Ex- exactly. Yeah. 
yeah, also, also, you know, things can change under you as an auditor. You know, how many hours a week do you spend reading over CFRs, yeah. looking for minutia, right? Making sure that you're on top of something. How much research do you do when you get a new sponsor with a with a with a new facility yeah. you haven't gone to, right? You spend time on that um, outside of the time you spend auditing and writing reports. Um, what we're wanting the AI to do is understand that world enough to effectively do that on your behalf and surface to you the things that are important. So does it generate the questions for you, the checklist? And uh, what uh, input do you need to, uh, to uh, do in advance in order to uh, get all this information? So, so, so yeah, let, let me uh, <laughs> bring in a little bit. The, the first version, right, is really using the knowledge that I have gained from my 18 plus years of experience, uh, doing audits, responding to regulatory agencies, being in the front and the back room uh, during multiple audits, right? During contentious audits, right? And really the, the base model, we're doing the risk-based approach, yeah. right? Which is, hey, what are the typical questions asked by uh, regulators that we know are hot spots for issues, right? So we're going to have questions for the manufacturing. We're going to have questions for QC. We're going to have questions for the warehouse. For example, for QC, we're, we know that they, they will always inspect HPLC. For manufacturing, they're always going to say, what's your critical process parameter and what's your in-process testing, right? That's the base model. I think in the future with the AI, what we're going to have is the AI processing information from regulatory agencies. And the idea is all regulatory agencies one day or you know, uh, sooner or later. And basically say to you, you're inspecting a company in this country. This AI has now detected that, for example, uh, the regulatory agencies in the United States in the last three to five years have started uh, issuing 483 observations on supply chain. And, you know, it might recommend to you, these are, uh, you, you did not uh, create questions about supply chain. Here's a recommended list of questions, right? That, that's yeah. kind of like the future state where I yeah. can see so this it's thing It's basically really going. cool also for internal audits because it lets you uh, really uh, cover yourself also when you do internal audits and, uh, and it says, okay, there were so many uh, observations. Uh, we must uh, also look at it in our company. So it uh, works uh, then uh, both sides. So it, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah. actually, in internal audits is a big issue for different people. We figured out that... Um, you know, it's highly recommended internal audits are done like all year long, regular basis. And a lot of the small pharma companies don't have the personnel and resources to actually do that. Um, some of the, the folks we talked overseas, English isn't their first language. Uh, they have trouble interpreting the uh, regulations, particularly from the FDA that are, that are vague. Um, and they want to be able to do more internal audits, but they don't have enough personnel with the experience to, to do that effectively. Um, so again, it was a, it was a, perceived as a tool that we could use in either context to to basically enhance whatever um, uh, uh, quality and, and, and auditing, uh, auditing capabilities that a company has or help them acquire it with less resources that they normally wouldn't spend, right? Mm -hmm. Like the yeah. goal is to help, you know, everyone be able to be successful uh, in passing an audit for whatever regulatory agency that they need to pass that for, um, regardless of, of where they are from a resource and finance perspective. Yeah, picking up on that idea of internal audits, right? So, you know, most of the companies I've been with, more than five, only one company has actually done a true internal audit, as you're supposed to, right? And, and for me, the primary reason there is resource. You, you just don't have enough quality assurance personnel and or any other personnel from other departments who would actually have the time to do audits. The one company that was doing the internal audit, the directors were doing the, the, the audit, right? And so I'm like, they're going like, what is a guy making nearly $200,000, $250,000 doing, reviewing paperwork like this thick, 
right? Like for a whole day, the you know the manufacturing manager is like this over paper, this thing, right? And he doesn't have any idea because he's just. Good, at least he, he testing, gets uh, he does right? a bit of work for this money. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and the idea for, for, for the vision for the software is that someday you, you, you essentially give 20 years of experience to maybe a, a, an operator or an analyst with maybe two to three years of experience, basic knowledge of GMP, understanding of how a tablet works and yes or no questions. And basically, the, the, the mm -hmm. app is guiding them, saying, hey, this thing, if you don't see this in the batch record, mm -hmm. this is critical. You should discuss this with the quality mm -hmm. manager, yeah. right? You should definitely make an effort to ask the following questions, right? And I, I, I think that's the part where a, an, a software increases the efficiency of a company, which directly impacts the, the bottom line, right? You can hire less people, your people can be more efficient, right? And everyone is happier because they know they're in compliance, right? I, I, I know I've worked with companies and I've seen companies that the QA professionals are, are just like, I just need to get out of here because we're not in compliance in any way, shape or form, right? I mean, they're scared of any uh, regulatory inspection, right? And what we want is this app to be able to support those regulatory inspections. I mean, I was speaking with Ken and David, and I was like, so if we build this app, can we do internal audits once a month with different people? But the questions essentially remain the same, and you have some statistical analysis on the questions so that no one can say, Oh, manufacturing just mad at QA. Now they're getting even with us, right? Or QC is going. You gave me such a hard time. I'm giving you a hard time. Yeah. QA. So you can you can blame right. the AI. It's no, kind it'll, it'll of, it's not us. <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't argue with the machine, yeah, right? Yeah, it's not yeah, me. Yeah. So. You just look silly arguing at the computer. <laughs> yeah, and basically, you know, you, you can, you know, if you do it throughout the year once a month, right? You can actually now have correlating data, right? Meaning, well, you know, you found something in January, was it fixed in March or June? Or is it still open in December, right? Now, if, you're, if your company is doing a good job, you should fix it in March, let's say. But imagine now if you can print a report off this and the the regulatory agency asks, hey, are you doing internal audits? And you go, yes, we are. Here's a graph you know, of, of all of the action items and when they were closed. And you know, if you want some details about it, we can't divulge everything to you. But if you want the basic description, the type of comment, or the type of kappa, we can show you those, those broken down by the AI. You know, and, and, and I think that's a, an easier way to answer that question of, are you doing your audits? What do you show to the regulatory agencies to show you are doing your audits without showing them the dirty laundry, right? Because that's what everyone is afraid of is, I don't want to show them what I'm doing wrong. Well, yes and no, because they need to know that you're fixing them. So how can you show them that you're fixing it? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the the I think the the chat quality in pharma are are pretty broad. Um, we wanted to start, you know, predominantly because Rhett was complaining about doing audits. <laughs> we wanted to start at the end of audits. Um, but as we as we talk to other people, we think there might be a lot of opportunities to to sort of fill out um, other tools that maybe work with this system that really um, help uh, different customer segments with their problems in quality, right? Um, I think something like 81% um, of all the new drugs that come to market come from small pharma startup companies, but 90% um, of all the quality management systems and software are targeted towards large enterprise companies. They charge uh, accordingly. Um, they require the resources accordingly. Uh, we're trying to build something that's really for the, the small pharma folks, see if we can help them pass their audits, 
Now let's see if we can make sure we can help them do internal audits. Now let's walk back through their quality system and see what else we might be able to automate so that the, the human personnel they have can do their absolute best work and particularly the stuff they enjoy doing the most and take all the tedium out of uh, as much of the, the whole chain of process as we possibly can. Um, I think I think that starts with helping them with the end process with the audit. And I think that starts with the AI uh, learning about the entire world of, of pharma auditing and quality and just sort of like working our way backwards through it. Um, and then, you know, again, at this point, we're looking for um, reference customers and partners to work with us. Um, I don't know if Rhett told you we started a new partner program. And the idea is that we're going to develop this software uh, in conjunction with the, the customers who would use it so they can give us the most direct feedback, tell us what features they need most, tell us where we need to branch out. And essentially, as we remove points of pain, they tell us where the, where the new area of pain is for us to help with. Um, and that's that's really how we want to focus the development of the product. So you're uh, really right now in the alpha phase, beta phase, where are you at now? Yeah, we're we're, we're in alpha early phase. alpha phase. Yeah, we're in early alpha phase, and um, and yeah, we just we we got a lot of feedback from auditors on what they felt they needed, and now we need to get some folks to start giving us feedback on uh, what it is from their point of view. Um, more diverse variety of people, more types of problems. Uh, we want to put all the information we can in and solve some of those problems with software development and some of those problems with artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So you're looking for partners uh, free, or charge, uh, free of charge as, uh, hel that help you test uh, your software? Uh, I think I think at this point it's probably a very deep discount. <laughs> but <laughs> it really, it really, running, it really right? depends on the nature of their business, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And uh, why do you think uh, this is... Uh, the right time why, why now that the companies the pharma companies that are uh, so uh, old-fashioned need to make that uh, you know that move that big move <laughs> yeah uh, I, yeah go right I, I i think you know it to me it's the new age of quality right everything is you know the, the we're we're in the age of information right and yet pharma is acting like it's still, you know, the 19th century with production processes, you know, linear production processes, right? I know some companies have been speaking about integrating computers into their everyday livelihood. Let's say manufacturing processes with, you know, human machine interface, right? And, you know, I've been hearing that for the last 20 years, Yan, but I've never seen one company actually do it you know, real time, right? And so I, I think there's a challenge there that in pharma, pharma is so concentrated into either, you know, the, the sciences of chemistry, biology, right? That to bring in the advances in information technology, ideas like lean and agile, right? Or even the ideas of an AI, artificial intelligence, right? It, it, it's so difficult because the two fields are so far apart, right? I, I think I got lucky in getting connected with Ken and David because they understand, you know, the, 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 the IT. I tend to understand the quality. And in between, we meet and we're able to say, you know, these are the challenges for pharma. Can you solve them, right? Because first you have to be, you have to have people who can communicate. Right. And it, it, it is very, very difficult for, you know, you, you, I don't think you can find any quality person who's also an IT person. Right. I mean, maybe me 20 years ago, I could fiddle with the computer. Right. But now I, I'm having problems with Google Sheets. Right. And so the idea of the company is really to to be the interface right, for the pharma industry and the IT sector to say, what's your pain point, pharma? Maybe IT can solve it. Maybe AI can solve it. Well, actually, we know that we can solve it. It's just the implementation but, uh, why that's the challenge. Why do you think uh, there is this uh, challenge and this uh, problem? Why uh, the pharma companies uh, are really that um, 
reluctant to do this change so is it be is it because of regulatory problems or they uh, uh, just don't have their resources or they just say uh, don't have uh, the broad idea what's out there yeah i i, I think it's all three uh, i mean definitely resources because if you bring something in oh the problem that comes up validation of software everyone's scared of validation of software right but really what's the risk right i mean has anyone really been cited for a 483 observation on software validation right me, me i haven't seen that particular one right but just to hedge that off our company will help you do that right D just like hplc companies provide packets we can provide packets for that uh i think resource definitely you know so definitely the resource but also part of it is the tradition right we don't like something new right why are you going to change something right the whole world is changing around us i want my work yeah. to remain the same right i i think for people like that that you know that that's their choice but there's also people who grew up with computers who grew up with alexa right and you know, someday I would like to say, audit assist, please explain 483 observation. What is yeah, a critical yeah. process parameter? And it just starts talking to me, telling me the basics of what a CPP is, right? And, and, and then it'll say something like, the guidance for this is as follows. In the US, it's this reference. In the EU, it's this reference. In Japan, it's this reference, right? And then maybe you go, but I'm in China right now. And the audit assist will come back and say, the regulatory guidance in China is as follows, right? So, so I think that that's where you, re, you know, if they just haven't seen what the strength of, of it in their work is, but if they could just imagine having their Alexa helping them during their work, I think that begins that start of the vision, right? Where you can go, Oh my God! I can't. I don't even know how to turn on and off my my lights because Alexa always does it. You know, right? Yeah, I would. Yeah. I would definitely like to see the day where you're saying, saying, you know, audit assist. Make note: the bathroom in this facility is is horrible, and it says, ah, here's where I'm going to make note of that in this giant checklist of things, right? Yeah. And audit so it knows assist. I saw such and such. To put it, right, the note. Right. Oh, that's, like that's that that's really cool. that's really what I'd like to see. Where where it's literally like you know, it's like you have. A secretary with you and you're just telling her hey i'm dictating what i what i see sure i'm filling this out for you everywhere you go you can check it make sure everything's good but i'll yeah. fill it out as you walk around and just take care of you yeah um, that's not that far fetched so it's uh, it's so uh, clear because uh, yeah so um yeah google has uh, such my such power and um, yeah. yeah so you just need to bring it and transfer it to other areas so uh, but uh, i also think that uh, things are changing because uh, as you said yeah. uh, uh, as red said uh, that uh, this uh, pharma is uh, a lot of si uh, it's all about science it's about the uh, docu documentation but um, when i uh, did my uh, uh, master's degree in biology and biotechnology uh, you cannot d it's not a, so like the lab work it's like i don't know 20 percent everything else you're doing on the on software you learn python you learn c plus plus because you uh, uh, so they teach you how to uh, analyze uh, to build software to analyze dna so they trying to push uh, the, um, also uh, IT and uh, and the programming also in the, in biology is so because it's uh, it's all interconnected it's uh, it the same with the uh, great AI companies that uh, research uh, solution for uh, drug research instead of 20 years in the lab uh, the computer can do like 10,000 analysis uh, like uh, in a few hours minutes so I, I think it's really uh, uh, really the future and uh, so yeah. do we have something else to add about the AI part um, something uh, that's um, that we didn't talk about um, yeah, we're, I mean, we're a little bit sort of like itchy about talking about the AI because it's a little oh, bit of okay. our secret <laughs> sauce. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, we're looking at getting a lot of data from, you know, previous audits, uh, from, um, you know, any regulatory agencies that are willing to share that data. Um, you know, we're looking at, at using the AI to produce our schedules. 
um, the schedules for the auditors, I mean, for generating the reports, um, for, you know, the, the history of reporting um, for that agency. You know, we're looking at um, our, our AI. AI in general is sort of a weird, uh, weird term, right? It can mean a lot of different things. Um, so we care about really using it as a tool to solve problems, as an intelligent tool. Um, so we hear about things like, yeah, but, you know, like the history of, of you know, I went to this company three years ago and, you know, I, I needed to, I need to know what happened and I need to put it in context for what questions I'm going to ask now. You know, we can use AI for things like that fairly easily. Um, but, mm -hmm. you know, the details yeah. of how we do that, like, you know, I'm a little bit like, yeah. I'm a little bit itchy <laughs> about sure. saying it's going to stay right a secret now. for now. <laughs> Um, so, so you asked some questions about, you know, why now? Uh, yeah. uh, and, and there's a few things that, that strike me. Like initially when we first started the company, I did a bunch of research to find out what's being done. Um, and there are companies that are focusing on the science, right? They have the idea that, you know, they, they make this comparison. Um, you, you, you had a point where you had offices absolutely full of people doing typing. Uh, running notes and memorandums around the office, and then Microsoft completely changed that by creating the Knowledge Worker. Right, it created a suite of software where floors of people are now replaced by one person. Um, there are companies that are trying to do that for the science aspects and research. Right, there are companies that are looking at IoT for the manufacturing floors so that they can assure quality through a set of sensors and regular processes that that really improve the quality control and have records to show that nothing's deviating um there's this big big push to digitize everything for for all the pharma companies um they they understand that that the old processes are just really inefficient uh they want to be more efficient but the the opportunity there is 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 difficult if you're not large if you don't have funds to invest in it um, if, if you don't use the, the big players in the software, there's just very limited options for you. And while there are tons of tools that are marketed towards auditors and various other types of inspections, they're not designed specifically for pharma. There's a learning curve to use them. A lot of times they require some type of developer or, or uh, uh, some technical person on the other end who's maintaining that system, right? Um, so it's just, it's just very, very hard for, I, I think, a lot of pharma companies even to think about approaching this. Uh, someone coming from outside with their best interests in mind, I think, uh, would make a huge difference for them, right? That's that's first and foremost. And then, you know, we started the company just before the pandemic hit, which, as you can imagine, really shifted our, our focus and scope for building the company. Um, and as I've watched this sort of unfold, the thing that's that's fascinating is that the, the tools that do exist for the companies that can afford them have dramatically sped up. The, the ability to come up with vaccines, right? The, 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 the sheer notion that we're in clinical trials now would have been unheard of even five years ago. This is, this is all due to, to what we have in terms of automation. Um, that critical bottleneck to this day is still the quality process, right? Many, many aspects of the quality process. Uh, so I think now's a good time to try to figure out what we can do to improve that process, how things can run in parallel at every level. Uh, and at least in this case, I think inspections is the very last thing anybody's looking at, um, because I think they just didn't imagine there was much that could be done. Um, yeah, so, I, I, I would like them to look at it sort of now, though, because. I... <laughs> yeah, let's look at it now. right? If they, if they can imagine what their lives can be like with a little bit of help, uh, they should come talk to us um, so we can help make that that imagination a reality. Yeah, great. Yeah. To yeah. follow up on what Ken said, um, you know, why the delay in implementation? I think it's the perceived cost of new software coming in, right? Certainly, the validation is very daunting, but I think a lot of companies also, you know, they have this philosophy, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, we're a quality company unless it comes to the budget. Yeah. In which case, oh, your budget, QA, or quality? that's gonna be maybe 1% or 0.5% of what the company budget is, right? And yes, QA becomes the champion only when the regulatory agency is knocking at your door, getting ready for an inspection, right? Going, mm -hmm. all right, let's go see what you guys have, right? Then it's like, 
QA, to, we will spend any amount of money for quality <laughs> assurance, right? For quality, oh yeah, software for quality, absolutely, right? But then when they see the cost, right? But but I want to phrase the conversation in a different way, right? What happens when you get that observation, when you get that regulatory agency giving you that written notice of a warning letter, right? So so one organization that I know of, right? Uh, Everything was checked off, approved by the agency, except for one thing, the drug substance manufacturer. And I was reviewing, you know, the, the historical issues with it. And I said, oh, my gosh, the company never sent an auditor into this drug substance manufacturer, right? They basically farmed it out, but no one went with the guy, right? And so... Just from that one audit, what happened, right? Well, there's three years of a delay, right? How much is three years worth? For that company, it's about $30 million. What else happened? Well, the reputation of the company basically went down. The regulatory agencies didn't trust the company anymore, right? Because they said, hey, we've been asking you to fix this thing for the last year, for the last two years. Now it's the third time. What are you doing that you can't get them to the GMP level that we ask you, right? And, and, and from a regulatory perspective, hey, that, that's a fair question. Three years is a long time in pharma. You should be able to create revolutions in pharma in three years, right? How come they still have 75 open kappas that are older than one year, right? And, and of course, if I'm a regulatory agency and I'm looking at that and I'm like, I don't think you're helping them, right? So, so, so really, you know, the cost of quality, of not doing quality, it's, it's much larger and should be balanced against their budget, right? Because it, you know, it will delay approval of um, submissions, you know, your pre your, the market authorizations will be delayed, right? And, and the added cost, I think, is it's going to increase the regulatory focus on your company, right? And when that happens and you have five other products in the pipeline, then everything starts to become a crawl, right? Because now the agency is asking you, well, I remember your first product that you did with us. So let's go back to this section, right? And let me inspect this really thoroughly to make sure that you understand what we said about your first product, right? And, and, and that's the challenge, right? Is the cost isn't seen firsthand when you're making the budget for the company. The cost is only seen three years after the delay of, you know, the, the product. The cost is only seen when the president sitting across from me during <laughs> dinner asking me how your auditor missed this one thing. And I'm like, he wasn't the auditor then. That was even before I came here, right? You know, but, but in their head, quality is one continuous thread, right? The people don't matter. It's the quality team. And so that, you know, so I think for me, companies really need to, to increase their budget for the quality team to give themselves a chance to pass the regulatory inspections, right? I, I know for a fact the FDA in the EU will be focusing in on China and India, right, in the next decade or so, yeah. right? That, you know, and, and these, these are countries, fantastic science, right? But one of the challenges there is going to be the language barrier. Right. So how are you going to get auditors who speak Chinese and or who speak the many languages in India? Right. And so 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 that's really, I you know, for us in the future. Right. That's where the A.I. might come in. You know, I know David doesn't want to <laughs> give out. The he's, secret he's really song. serious right now. He's not satisfied. <laughs> he's, a language, right? he's a computer language or or how, how am i saying that Dave? it's the you know that expertise you have voice recognition or something i'm sorry i'm gonna have to speak to my lawyer about this one <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know maybe some you know maybe 
I mean, we have apps now where you speak in English and then you play it back. It's going to be in the right language, right? Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying that, you know, I, I don't want to make promises about our software that we might not be able to deliver. But the possibilities now of going to a foreign country, you speak in English, you play it back to them in Japanese, that's mind-blowing, right? It, it well, does well, mean we're also looking at simplifying the types of questions that yeah. we ask during the audit. Yeah. Um, to make them, you know, a little bit less uh, ambiguous and a little bit less, uh, you know, focused on, you know, one demographic population yeah. like the U.S., for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would uh, be a bit uh, careful for now uh, with uh, uh, voice recognition and translation because uh, we we all uh, know the funny memes, right, uh, with, the, uh, <laughs> with the wrong translations. Uh, so there is a bit uh, of time there, I think. But I, I agree completely that... Uh, that uh, that companies need to invest more money in technology because they don't understand, I think, how much time you save. And so you said, uh, you, so right, you mentioned, uh, so you have this uh, big executive and uh, he's wasting his uh, time on uh, this, uh, on reading this, uh, this much of uh, documentation, uh, but uh, also the same for the quality team. They, so uh, some companies have uh, 50 people in the quality team, some have only three and they do the, the same amount of job. And they, then they spend so much time on manual uh, manual typing and the conferences. So, oh, I misspelled this. Do you remember what he said? What was his name? Oh, I forgot. And uh, so much uh, time wasted on writing the reports and so on, so on, so on. So uh, when you calculate it, uh, so I think uh, uh, maybe the companies and the upper management uh, really need to, to go to the quality and think how they can help them uh, be more efficient because quality is happy to be more efficient but yeah. as, as red said until uh, the audit is not there uh, the, the uh, people want to see the batch release they don't care quality so they're not going to re release the batch right so <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i don't care i release the batch uh, and yeah. Uh, yeah. but only when the there is audits when, the, when there are problems suddenly uh, they come and they, that's why i think uh, you are all completely right they need a uh, budget they need, uh, need to digitalize uh, the whole uh, the whole system and um, i uh, cross my fingers uh, for uh, uh, your product and i hope it uh, works out and uh, i think there is a bright uh, future for it and uh, and i wish you all the the best luck so uh, <laughs> thank you Red, uh, david can uh, thank you. best oh, of luck with your you. product thank you very much it was great talking to you i was glad you have us here today yeah thank you very much thank you thanks yeah Thank you for watching and listening to this uh, episode of the Qualitox podcast. I hope you liked it. If you did, uh, uh, consider subscribing so you don't miss new episodes and share it uh, with your colleagues. Stay compliant and see you in the next one.